An army marches on its stomach, or so the old saying goes. My clansmen have been farming and tending sheep for hundreds of years, but gathering enough food to feed an army is a different matter entirely. Without a strong economy, the meager forces that we've cobbled together will collapse again. To support the Scottish army, you'll need to build up your stockpile of resources. To win, gather 50 food, 50 wood, and 50 gold. To gather food from the forage bush, click a villager. Then right-click a forage bush near the blue flag. In the status area at the bottom of the screen, you can see how much food the villager is carrying. The villager continues to gather from the forage bush until he's carrying 10 food. The villager will continue working for you, carrying the food to the town center. The amount of food you have is shown in the upper left corner of the screen. In addition to your food stockpile, you can see your current wood, gold and stone stockpiles. The more villagers you have, the faster you can gather resources. Assign your new villagers to gather food. Good! You found some gold! You now have 50 food. To win, also gather 50 wood and 50 gold. Excellent! You now have enough gold. To gather wood, click a villager, then right-click a tree. If you haven't found any gold yet, search in the unexplored territory. You're well on your way to making a city. Edward Longshanks, for all his disrepute, has shown military tactics in Wales, England, and France to be very effective, if not cruel and ruthless. He's indeed an enemy to be feared. The English sacked the town of Berwick upon Tweed. Would that I could call it a battle, but it was truly more of a massacre. Unless we organize our army, there will be more massacres to follow. I pray we can be ready for Long Shanks coming. In villages throughout the Highlands, there is grim talk of skirmishes between Scotland and England. We lost the city of Dunbar this week. Scottish defenders broke ranks and fled. The English have an army that is larger and better trained. To compete with them, we are going to need new recruits to pick up the spear, sword, or bow. We must remake these shepherds into soldiers. We will need many soldiers to defend our homeland. We'll start by creating villagers. Click your town center, then click the Create Villager button 
in the lower left corner of the screen. It takes time for a villager to appear. If your town center is selected, you can see the progress in the status area at the bottom of your screen. Good job! The villager has appeared next to your town center. Now, create another village. You need additional housing to support your population. To build a house, click a villager. Kia. Click the buildings button, click the build house button, then click where you want to build the house. If more than one villager builds a building, it will go up faster. Good job! Try building another house. Each house supports five units. The population indicator at the top of the screen shows your current supportable population. Other buildings are made just like houses. Try building a barracks. The barracks is a military building. Barracks complete. Now you can create soldiers. Click the barracks, then click the Create Militia button. Selecting different buildings or units gives you different options in the lower left corner of the screen. That's one militia unit. Create three more and you'll have enough soldiers to protect this area and win the scenario. Click the barracks and quickly click the Create Militia button three more times to make three soldiers in a row. Now that you have a few soldiers, you'll be able to defend this area against English attacks. Now that we have militias stationed across the border, the English have slowed their raids. But facing Long Shang's army will be another matter. The wicked English king has yet to bring his famous longbows to bear. Our militias could only get us so far. We are going to need more advanced weapons. <laughs> 